This is the sixth section of the functions and graph chapter. And now we're just combining the uh, transformations that we've known before with the modulus transformation. So we're now adding this and we're adding this. Yeah, so that's it basically. There's nothing sort of extra to that. It's all stuff that we now know. Let's combine them. So we're given the original graph. Two transformations here on the first one. The two in front is going to stretch it by two in the y direction. And then this is going to move the whole graph down by one. So let's just write down what it's going to do. So it's going to stretch it by two that way. So all the y coordinates are going to get doubled. And then the whole graph is going to move down that way, which means that the uh, we take one away from the y coordinates. So actually, we could probably draw that straight off. Now we know what the transformations do. Now, I suppose the shape isn't really going to look much different. It's we just need to remember to move it down one. So if we move everything down one, we will end up with something like this. Um, and I'm now going to put the coordinates on, remembering to double the y coordinates and take one away. So here, negative one doubled is negative two, take one away, negative three. This here, uh, the y coordinate gets doubled, that was zero, take away one, so it's negative one. So this is zero, negative one. This peak up here, so remember the y coordinates, the x coordinates aren't changing. Double it, eight, take away one, seven. And that's it, B. Now on this one, um, let's write down what it's gonna do. The plus two in the brackets is gonna move it to that way. And then it's gonna move it up to that way. So the first bit is going to take away two. Let's write that as minus two. It's gonna take away two from the um, X coordinate and then it's going to add two to the y coordinates. Let's draw this. So we're going to move it across by two and then move it up by two. So that means um, this point, I'm just going to put the points in and then join them up. So this point here, if I move it across by two and up by two that point ends up sort of here so this was where the origin was this point here if i move it across by two it's going to be here and i move it up by two it's going to go up to one okay so that's now one there um, the peak if i move that across by two that will be four four and then up by two That'll be four, six. So let's put that in. Four, six. Right, so we can now um, join them up. So we end up with this. So actually just make this a bit clearer there. So that coordinate there is 0, 1, and this coordinate here, which was at the origin, is now negative 2, 2. So negative 2, 2. C. Right, so this is going to do a couple of things as well. It's going to squash it by 4 in that direction. So we divide the y coordinates by 4. And the two in the bracket 
is going to um, divide the x coordinates by 2. It's going to get squashed that way. So let me just put y, we divide by 4, x, we divide by 2. So it's all going to get squashed up. Now with these squashes and stretches, anything at 0, 0 doesn't move. So really, I could draw exactly the same shape in the same position. Just change the what the coordinates are. So the zero zero is not going to change. Uh, this point here. So if I oops, that's gone. Let's pull that back. So um, this point here. Um, 2 divided by 2, divide the x by 2, so that's going to be 1. And the y you divide by 4, so negative a quarter. This one up here, the x we divide by 2, the y we divide by 4. So there we go, that's done. And the last one, d, here. So the 3x minus 12 in the bracket well, the way that we need to deal with that bracket is actually factorize it. So we've got 3x minus 4, like this. So this bit is going to move the graph, and we need to do this bit first. This is going to move the graph uh, that way by 4. And then after we've done that, we then deal with the 3 and the 3 is going to squash it in the same direction by 3. So first of all we need to add 4 to the x coordinates and once we've done that we need to take that value once we've added 4 to it and then divide it by 3. Yeah so this is going to be a squash. Remember that the points where it crosses the origin those aren't going to move. Stretches and squashes don't um, affect those, uh, but the movement will. So we need to move it across by 4 and then squash it by 3. So let's move it across by 4. So maybe the bit that was at the origin was there. So something like this. I'll just make that a bit longer. So now we're going to put in those two coordinates so this is only going to affect the x coordinates not the y coordinates so the first x coordinate is 2 we add 4 to that gives you 6 divide it by 3 um, gives you 2 again so 2 negative 1 that doesn't change and then for the 6 4 the 6 we add 4 to becomes 10 10 divided by 3 so that's going to be 10 over 3 10 over 3, 4. Here we've got a graph of log and we are going to do transformations of that. So let's just draw and remind ourselves what the graph of log looks like. So there's an asymptote there, it crosses up 1. So that's log x. Um, so 2 f of x minus 3, so that's going to stretch 2 that way, and then the whole graph is going to move down by 3. So let's draw that. So if you stretch it by 2, it's actually not going to look any different. That crossing point is still going to be 1, 0. And if you move it down by 3, so actually it's going to be crossing in a different place. Let's do it in purple. So it gets moved down by 3. So we do need to work out what this is. So since this is now the graph of um, 2 log x, 2 times the graph minus 3, and we want to find out where it crosses the x-axis, so we want to solve a equal to 0. So 2 log x equals 3 
log x equals 3 over 2. So if we raise both sides to the power e, that means that that x coordinate is e to the 3 over 2. So we'll leave it exactly like that. So this point here is e to the 3 over 2. And don't forget the asymptote moves as well. So the asymptote was at 0, but since it's... Um, oh no, it'll still be at 0, sorry. Yeah, ignore what I just said. It hasn't moved across, it's just moved down. So yeah, it's still going to get to that asymptote axis, but it's going to take a little bit longer to get there. So ignore what I've just said. Part B, well not everything I've said, just that, that bit. Um, right, in part B, we take any part of the graph that's below the axis, we reflect it up, and also there's a negative x in the bracket. Now, whenever you've got the transformation f of negative x, what you do, you reflect in the y-axis yeah because you change the signs of the x's so i'm actually going to do this in two steps so i'm going to reflect my log x graph in the y-axis which probably means i need to make that a bit longer so it's going to look like this so that's step number one and then after that i take any part of that graph that's below the axis and flip it up so actually it's now going to look like this. So I'll take out that bit at the bottom and I actually end up with a graph that looks something like that. So that was minus one because of the, the flip um, and that's the only point where it crosses the axis. The asymptote's still in the same place. Okay, exercise 2F pages 47 to 48.